tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in IoT. Uh, my name is James Stansbury. I'm the uh, Senior Vice President and General Manager of IoT Products Group at Silicon Labs. And I've been with the company for about six years. Um, prior to that, I was at uh, Sony uh, Electronics for about eight, okay. and where I did uh, semiconductor re uh, research and design, system design. Right. And before that, I was at uh, Sil uh, Motorola for about 17 years doing semiconductor uh, design. So. so the title was what again? IoT products. Okay, so explain a little bit about that. So about, and we, we can't really figure out exactly when, but I think the first slide I actually saw it on was about four years ago. But we decided to pivot the company to focus on the Internet of Things before it was a thing that people cared about. And so we started looking at the components that, we, that were necessary. So we started, we actually acquired a mesh networking software company, okay. Ember. Um, a low power 32-bit microprocessor company, Energy Micro. And we put that together with the company's core CMOS RF expertise, and we started to, to uh, we, we started to grow an in-node in IoT products group around the company. And how long has that, how long has that been then? Uh, we've been working on it for about four years, probably going on our fifth year. And are there specific product lines that you dedicate? To IoT, yeah, absolutely. Or is it just embedded space in general? It's it's actually kind of generally embedded. Plus, mm -hmm. we also have a sensors organization that uh, is ah, doing right, some relatively right. straightforward semiconductor-based sensors, not okay. things like MEMS or gas sensors, but things like temperature and humidity and Bread light. And butter. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, I like to start by if you could just give our viewers maybe some different options. So they're looking at developing an IoT product. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're a product brand and they're considering the different options. What are the options then when embedding, you know, when using embedded sensors in a product? So, so by the way, you, you need to, you can't jump just down to the end product. Right. In, in IoT, this is a, this, it's a platform. I mean, there's an entire ecosystem from, from the sensor to communicating to the web or accessing Absolutely. the web to, to accessing the cloud and, and distilling patterns and all that. So first you have to decide, you know, are you creating an ecosystem? Okay. Or are you going to use somebody else's ecosystem? Or is this a, this is a standalone device that, that is somehow going to communicate you know, in a private network? Mm -hmm. And so that's really your f the first okay. place you have to start, okay. right? So once you've defined that, and let's say that you're using some generic platform, then you can focus on the, the actual embedded device. And in that platform, though, you have to kind of look at how do they use to communicate? What do they use, right? For, you know, like, Wireless protocols. Yeah. You know, is it Wi-Fi? Is it Bluetooth Low Energy? Is it is it Zigbee? Is it Thread? Is it proprietary? And with that, that'll actually make a lot of your decisions about the t what goes into the mm. software that Starting gets into radio technology. Right. Okay. And then that kind of goes down to okay, now you've defined the the protocols. How much processing power do I need to put into this this application? Okay. Right. And and then once you come at it from the top, you also have to kind of look at it from the bottom. What are you trying to sense? Yep. I mean, sensors, there's, there's, there's hundreds of them, right? You can sense temperature and light and rotation and watts and amperage, everything, right? So is it a single sensor or is it multiple sensors? Sensor array, yeah. And are, do you take the data and fuse them together and, and actually distill some information right. out of the combination? Right. So you need to think about that space to actually get started. And then once you do that, you can define the hardware. And now looking at the hardware, what what are the options? Is, okay. it, is it just sort of one, one skew fits all? No, okay, so this is interesting. So and the, the, the industry uh, today, in the beginning, is, is when you build an embedded platform, yeah. you generally will use a standalone MCU, you'll use a standalone radio, you'll use standalone sensors, Memory. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, but this is a market that's going to be power constrained, yep. it's going to be space constrained, yep. right? And so, Within the technology implementation, uh, kind of limitations, you're mm -hmm. actually going to see lots of integration. Okay, and what you'll, you're going to see very soon is the integration of the MCU with the radio. It's yeah. coming. Okay, right? so it's not there yet. It's, it's in some its cases, way. it's actually you no. Know, there's been there's been a couple of recent announcements in the in okay. the market. Uh, for example, at Embedded World, we we announced a Blue Gecko. 
uh, which is a Bluetooth low energy radio combined with a low power 32 nice. bit ARM nice. processor. Nice. Nice. Okay. okay, both best of class. And then we see it also happening, and some of some of the other companies in this in this market are doing something similar. Now. What you probably won't see, though, is the integration of the sensors themselves. Because what, what the market is going to require is probably the most common denominator of integration. Yeah. Right. Where the sensors, you want a device that can talk to any type of Multiple sensor. Sensors, yeah, so that type of integration probably yeah. won't occur. Okay. okay, so integration then, we're talking the MCU, we're talking the radio, we're talking a bit of memory. Yes, yeah. as, as a matter of fact. So, so with the MCU and with the radio, I mean, just to get a little bit more specific, you, you, you have non-volatile memory. You have to store yes. the program, right? Exactly, yeah. That has to be integrated into this, this IoT SOC. Um, you have to have RAM to run off of. You have to have a very broad set of MCU peripherals to be able to operate the sensor or operate, if there's a display, the display or actuate something, so mm -hmm. op amps and ADCs and DACs mm -hmm. and signal processing chains really for low filters. Level stuff. And, and, and the interesting thing is that actually because of the power requirements in these end nodes, I mean many of them are battery operated, um, you don't want to turn on the MCU or the, or the memory that often. Right, so right. all of these peripherals that are associated with this need to kind of run autonomously, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the memory, it's the peripherals, it's the processor, it's the radio and battery management, it's all got to be integrated into one device. Now, something important is, or that you can explain to me is, you said, okay, so we have the MCU, we have the memory, we've got the radio, and then we've got our sensors. Now, how, what is the connection between the two, you know, the, the sensor and, you know, the chipset that we just sure. talked about? I mean, you actually have to, I mean, the way most of these products are, will be based upon a general MCU type of okay. architecture. And one of the beautiful things about them is they come with a very broad peripheral set of, okay. you know, they, they, they have lots of GPIO, I squared C, SPI, okay. you know, lots of different interfaces, which okay. really shouldn't limit you to the types of interfaces that are available in sensors. Sensors will look at the market the same way. They'll see what's available on an MCU and they will, they will take their output and they will make it an I squared mm. C, for example. Mm. Okay. And if it, if it doesn't exist, and if it's an analog input uh, output, you can use the, the, the analog to digital converter on the MCU to actually take that data. So it's on so, there as well. Okay. So there's really not a limitation in this device. They've they're pretty well thought, about, thought out about what are all the potential mm. uh, connections that could be made to it. And it has enough horsepower and memory that it could run a higher level abstraction or language as well then. If, if it, it depends. I mean, there, there, it's interesting. IoT is, is it's thousands of applications. And, and in those applications, some of them can be done in the cloud. Right. Some of them can be done in the border router. And in those cases, the device computation power can be pretty low in memory. Mm -hmm. In others, you may want to put the application in the node, right. so you'll you'll end up with a higher proce higher speed processor and more yep. memory, more flash, and you put more of the program okay. there. So okay. there's there's a lot of flavors to to how mm -hmm. this will actually you know kind of get implemented. But I think you brought it up earlier. It's very important that before you start getting into the selection process, you thought through. Your, your requirements yes. effectively. You, you, you probably, you know, you want to, to pr think about what's going to be connected, how much program space you need. And by the way, do you need, do you want to do an over the, over the air update later, important. right? Important. I'd Very say important. for security. And, and yeah. it's important for security and also standards evolve. If you want the latest version of it to keep the network, you know, up to date, Absolutely. you've got to do o over the air. And in mm -hmm. some cases, that doubles the amount of memory you need on that endo device. Yeah, yeah, right. You have to keep the old and bring in the new. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I want to move into trends, but I want to I want to key off something you said, and that was you're going to either be your own ecosystem or your own platform. I can't remember which term you use, mm -hmm. or you're going to use someone else's ecosystem. Can you maybe elaborate a little sure, bit more sure. on that? And it, is that a trend? It, 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 there, is a, there are a lot of trends right now. Okay, let's start and, with that. Yeah, and, and so let's, let's just say, you know, the IoT is, is the internet of things, and you need to have the ability to connect to the, inter the internet. Now, when you do that, you're, you are bridging over uh, different protocols and different 
data formats. I mean, and, and there are some systems that provide IPv6 addressing all the way to the node that use TLS or uh, TCP IP type protocol to get to the node. Others are not. And, and so there's, there's some decisions made about what, how you want to actually implement this. So the ecosystem that you choose will define those for you. I see. And in order to, to get a lot of, if you're building a proprietary sensor network, you can do whatever you want. However, if you're building a product that you want to interact with other devices in the Internet of Things, you need an ecosystem. And whether it's, it's Apple's HomeKit or it's, or it's Samsung's um, SmartThings, okay. um, there's, there's, there's going to be several that, that you can access API somewhere in their ecosystem that allows you to connect your devices. And you, um, you have to you have to kind of think about whether that's your the way you want to do it or not. Uh, I believe that that you know the wireless protocols are all going to all going to be there. It's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Thread, Zigbee. Yeah, there's different use cases. But I think that that the the commonality really is in the application layer, which is tied to the ecosystem. And so right, you'll right. see you'll see several ecosystems evolve. Uh, for the, the devices that want to talk to one another and not just in the cloud. Yeah, and I would argue that the commonality will also be at the networking layer. When you mentioned IP, IPv6, I think that's an important one. Um, but then definitely at the application layer. Now, but when you said um, maybe create your own ecosystem, what did you mean by that? Well, I think there's, there's some applications, and 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 some of them are not necessarily for the for the, the you know like the the maker audience. But yes. w if you're building a a uh, building a factory automation system, which which requires extremely low latency um, and very high robustness. So maybe some of the ecosystems and uh, that that exist, they're not they don't meet those requirements. Right, right. And so you're going to have to build a proprietary system okay. to to actually do that. And there there are those that exist today. And I'm sure there'll be more for very specific types of, of access. I see. And again, the, and again, the focus is on the application layer. Is that what you're talking about? Well, not necessarily. No? Um, in this case, yeah. as you mentioned, it's it's actually all the way up from the physical layer through the network layer into the application layer. It 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 needs to be built kind of ground up. And okay. actually, you have to consider the hardware latency you know, in that particular example. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I see. It's I very see. very specific. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about some of the other big trends that you're seeing in embedded now? Sure. So, look, if, if you look at IoT, it's, it's, it's not one market. You know, there's industrial, home automation, security, uh, there's, there's fitness and wearables. There's actually even agriculture. Sure. I mean, we've, I've seen an agriculture. You've heard about the cow application, right? The dairy cow? <laughs> okay. The I famous have. one, yes. right? Yeah. I mean, so it's, there's many different trends going on right now. Right. Um, you know the most pu publicized ones is wearables. Sure. And and it's it's very interesting to see what's happening. Um, you know, there's definitely a wearable is going to become your personal identification device. It's also going to be your health monitoring device. It's also going to be your your uh, weekend fitness device. And and you'll see, that's a kind of a very interesting trend. And these embedded devices that I mentioned, that the low power, battery operated, connected type of devices fit into, especially into the activity monitor and the fitness monitoring market really well. Right, right. Um, you know, in the case of the, the identity devices, um, you know, that, that basically are a device that connects your cell phone to your watch, for example, and it does point of sale and all of that. That's actually almost a miniature cell phone on your wrist. And if you look at the fact that you have to charge it every day, pretty much t just like a cell phone, you charge it every day. Uh, so that's one interesting trend. I mean, every one of these have some very unique um, nuance trends about them. Um, the ones that are really taking off right now, home automation, uh, you know, connected lighting. Um, the uh, industrial has been around for years. It just hasn't gotten a lot of attention. It's probably going to grow to be it's the largest market. Now. Yeah. 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 Now, from an embedded point of view, I think you're at the atomic level, or or are you? Is there, if you're doing an industrial, an infrastructure versus a consumer, 
or a commercial, are you really looking, are you really choosing your chipsets differently or is it really at that low level that it really doesn't matter? So, so it's interesting. I mean, the, the chip, chipsets are a platform, right? And, and so what differentiates the, the application is actually the protocol stack and the application layer. Right. Okay, so you can actually, you, 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 you choose the hardware based on its capability to support the software, right? And, and so when you look at all of these applications, you can use a standardized set of network, you can develop your own and there's tools to do that. So you really, need, you're not, the hardware doesn't necessarily limit you, sure. right? It's the software defines the application in this case. Yeah, no, that makes sense. What are some other best practices that you can maybe share with our viewers? Best practices in the, in the development of IoT devices. Yeah. Okay, well, let's think about what the EndNote is. I mean, um, in most cases, um, it's, it's probably line powered, but in a, lar in a you know, large percentage of them, they're, they're not. Um, but power is an issue, always going to be a problem. And when you're developing these devices, you want to be able to, you want to use professional grade development tools. You, you, you want to use um, the, you want to have, you want to be looking at it on the network and how it interacts with, with the rest of the network. Mm -hmm. you, you want to um, ensure that at the device level, the network level and the application level, you've evaluated the security of the device. Right. Right. And you've, you've taken as much care as you can to make it as secure as you can. Um, and then also, you want to, if you, if you do have a power constraint um, application, profile the device. Go through by function and look at how much energy is being consumed by you know, that particular function and try to optimize around it. So those are just kind of some of the things that, that we see that are kind of best practices in, in developing for IoT devices. Can you tell our, our viewers, where can they find out more about you and your company? Sure, sure. So we have a variety of IoT videos, uh, white papers, and, uh, and information about our product specifically on our website, uh, okay. www.scilabs.com. Scilabs. Scilabs. I'll put it in the show analysis notes. And then also we have a uh, community and forum that is very focused on, our, on wireless and MCUs, which are nice. right in nice. the center of, of uh, IoT devices. And is that within uh, Scilabs, or is that it, Yes, you can access it directly from the website. Excellent, well thank you very much. No, thank you.